Hi friends, catch me posting two episodes and our annual recap episode. I think it turned out pretty good if I do say so myself, so please check out the recap episode on YouTube and if you want to know my thoughts on Night Swim, you can listen to that episode now on YouTube and the podcast. Now look, for whatever reason, I've been putting my faith in the cinema gods and I've just been going to the movies knowing nothing. I don't know how this keeps happening to me, but I was telling my honey when we left the auditorium, I don't think I saw a trailer for this movie and let me tell you something. The Beekeeper is not about a guy with bee-related powers. Hi friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I'm here as a friend to give you my spoiler-free thoughts on the latest movie I've watched in theaters or at home. If you're looking for my thoughts on a specific movie, DM me on Instagram, let me know on the podcast or in the comment section on YouTube. Tune in for new episodes every Friday and don't forget to follow the podcast, subscribe on YouTube and follow on Instagram. All the things everywhere so you don't miss out on what I'm watching and what we're going to be talking about. I left you on a weird note a second ago, right? B powers? In my defense, look at this poster. Look at this poster. Maybe it wasn't the right choice artistically because going into this movie, knowing nothing but this poster, part of me is thinking and please tell me if you see it too. When enough bees come together, they form Jason Statham. Is it just me? Let's get into today's episode on The Beekeeper. One man's brutal campaign for vengeance takes on national stakes after it's revealed he's a former operative of a powerful and clandestine organization known as Beekeepers. No bee powers here, but the movie was still interesting. Would it have been more interesting if he turned into a swarm of bees? Probably. What I'm trying to say is that this movie held my attention. I like the storyline, even if it's basically a whole other franchise that we may or may not have talked about recently, and the other franchise did it better. Uh, John Wick. Though, if you've been here for a while, then you know I don't mind a similar story, but just do something different. Stand out and deliver something unique. Unfortunately, this movie felt like a shadow of an attempt at something that was done so much better already. If I put that thinking aside, I like the storyline here. I like the idea of Adam Clay, Jason Statham's character, seeking vengeance. This brings with it a lot of really cool action sequences as well as some creative kills. Additionally, I always love when they add details in the action. For example, in this movie, I like the moments in the action where we're shown the character of Mr. Clay and we can see what kind of guy he is. The movie does a really good job of moving the story in a way that's really easy to follow and the pacing seems fine as well. Nothing feels really rushed in this movie. Okay, I will say maybe the beginning does feel a little bit rushed, but if anything, I feel like the movie was a little bit longer so we had more time, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later in the episode. I actually laughed quite a bit in this movie. Now, I'm going to be honest, usually I laugh a little if a kill is particularly brutal, but more often than not, I was laughing because of funny moments or dialogue and honestly, some over-the-top scenes that just sent me. Speaking of brutal kills, this movie is rated R, which it should be. The rating really elevates that vengeance element. The CGI wasn't too bad, and I really like the practical effects. If you caught my podcast exclusive on It's a Wonderful Knife, then you might remember when I commented on how blue the movie was. Well, the beekeeper is yellow. Really yellow. Okay, I'm exaggerating. It's like full of glow, golden, brown, and yellow tones that bring a warmth to the movie that you might not even notice until you're watching the movie for a little bit longer. I really like the acting in this movie. We're of course going to start this off by talking about former pro diver Jason Statham as Mr. Clay. Honestly, there's potential for nuance here, but it's really just Statham doing what he usually does, which I like, so I'm not going to be mad about that. Emmy Raver Lampman. I haven't seen her since the Umbrella Academy, and honestly, I have beef with her. Anyway, as Verona Parker, I really felt like the character was running in place and I was getting frustrated with her. I do think the character should have been written a little better overall in this regard. I will say, however, that Emmy did a really good job and I especially love the moments she has with Bobby Nadiri's Matt Wiley. 
I feel like they had really good chemistry and their relationship was believable. I always love to see Jeremy Irons. He's got a great presence on screen. And as Wallace Westwild, he really helped to emphasize the threat of the beekeeper. Because Wallace is a knowledgeable and seasoned character, it's clear that he knows more and Jeremy Irons speaks volumes in the subtleties of his performance. Now, I wasn't going to end this section without talking about Josh Hutcherson as Derek Danforth. It's funny because the most recent roles I've seen him in is PETA in The Hunger Games and Mike in Five Nights at Freddy's. And Derek Danforth is so different from those two characters. As an audience, we immediately understand what kind of person Derek is, and Hutcherson does this effortlessly in a way that is extremely entertaining. All right, so what did I think about the movie? Was it worth watching? Let's just put it all out there. This movie is worth watching, but I think you're better off waiting for this one to stream or waiting for a discount day at the theater. This is primarily because while it does what it does well, what it does, other movies have done so much better. This movie is stylish. It's got some scenes with over the top and colorful characters. It's got solid action and brutality, genuinely funny moments, and some scenes with vibrant colors. All things that other movies have done astronomically better. One thing that I wish the movie did better, if anything, was the opening, the reason for the vengeance. The story needed to set up that emotional connection and make us feel it too. In my opinion, it wasn't the fault of the acting here. I really think it was the writing. Like we were in a rush to get the opening out of the way just so we can get to the action. That emotional connection is the foundation of the whole story. And without it, we might as well just forget it and get to the action because we don't care. As an audience, we need to care for this idea to work or just give him B powers and we'll be distracted. Speaking of bees, I was kind of tired of it, rolling my eyes a little, if you will. I think the comments about him being, quote, just a beekeeper, unquote, were actually really funny. But when they started to go on and on about protecting the hive, maybe once or twice, so we get it, but it was a lot that didn't lead to a bigger picture like I was hoping it would. Like I said earlier in the episode, I wish the movie was a little bit longer so we had more time, and this is primarily for world building. John Wick is one of my favorite franchises, full stop, period. One of the main reasons is because of the world building. I think there's a very wide open door for the beekeeper to really immerse us into this world. As of right now, I can't find any information on a sequel, but I think if it's written well, it has potential. I do think it'll be hit or miss though because the emotional foundation is already weak and the ties that hold Mr. Clay to the world of being a beekeeper just aren't strong enough to move forward without a really good reason for a sequel. So this is probably the first and only time I'm going to be dropping an episode the week the movie is released. So if you haven't seen The Beekeeper yet, do you plan on watching it? If you've seen the movie already, what did you think? Like I said, I think this movie does what it does well. It's a fine action flick, but I think it should have been pushed overall to make it stand stronger against similar movies because there were a lot of really cool things that the movie did. I just wish it did more. I would say that if you want a movie where something happens to the main character and then we get to watch them enact their vengeance, there are better movies for this, like the previously mentioned John Wick, The Crow, Kill Bill, or even Taken, just to name a few off the top. Now, I know I said a lot of negative things, but honestly, this movie did a lot of good things, and I think it's a good one to watch if you're getting into the genre. Or if you're a seasoned fan going into this movie with your expectations somewhere in the middle. Honestly, I had no expectations, but I think the fact that it was so much like John Wick really threw me off, but not so much so that I was not entertained. All right, movie fans, that brings us to the end of the episode. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you very much. Check out the description below for a link to the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please consider leaving the video a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and for catching today's episode. You can listen to new episodes every Friday. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, follow me on Instagram, all the things, so you don't miss out on the next movie we're going to be talking about. I watched Night Swim. If you want to know my thoughts on that movie, I posted that episode today as well. 
Next up is going to be Mean Girls. I think this is going to be an amazing movie. I'm looking forward to returning to a familiar story and to see how that musical element ties in. I recently got tickets to see Argyle. There is so much to be excited for. Dula Peep, the music, the stylish action, John Cena. I love John Cena. He's supposed to be in the movie, but I didn't see him anywhere in the trailer. Anyway, I'm also looking forward to the cat definitely being the real agent Argyle. I do want to let you guys know that there is a very high chance that this episode will have to be pushed out because unfortunately I have to adult for the first week of February. Please check out my Instagram and or the community tab on YouTube for updates on this episode. Moving on to the podcast exclusive episodes because I don't want you to think I forgot about them. We've got Rebel Moon and Leave the World Behind. I don't have movie tickets for anything after Mean Girls until Argyle, so keep a lookout for those episodes on the pod. So I hope you'll join me on YouTube and the podcast, especially for those exclusive episodes. I would love to hear from you guys, so please let me know your thoughts on today's episode or just your thoughts on the movie that we talked about today in the comments section on YouTube or on Spotify. I've got the q and I've got the poll, so check it out. I want to know what you think, so let me know wherever you are listening or on Instagram at a.rocket.review, and I'll talk to you next week. But until the next episode, spread positivity, be safe, take care of yourself. And I have to ask, would this movie have been a 10 out of 10 if he was bees? I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.